Hi everyone. So having worked on black space for a while now, we finally feel like we're at a point where we can start demonstrating some of the game point mechanics. That's not to say that any of the mechanics are set to stone though, we are tuning and changing every little piece as we see fit and as the rest of the game mechanics come together, so what you see here might actually be significantly different than what we end up shipping with. And with that disclaimer out of the way, now let's start talking about black space flight mechanics. So controlling the lander is going to feel fairly familiar to those who've played first or third person shooters, be it on consoles or PCs. So similar to those kinds of games, uh, you use the WASD keys to tilt the craft side to side and forward and backwards, which essentially allow the craft to start moving laterally. And here I'm just pushing WASD to demonstrate that effect while the lander is on the ground. So for me to actually start moving laterally, I'll have to take off. So to take off, we mapped the thrusters simply to the right mouse button for those using the keyboard and mouse combo. And right off the bat you'll notice that while in the air the lander will always try to maintain a forward facing orientation. So while you can thrust manually with the right mouse button, we also have another feature in there that allows you to maintain your altitude and we call it the hover lock. Essentially what happens is that uh, given your current altitude when you hit the middle mouse button as demonstrated here, the lander will try to adjust its, well, not really altitude per se, but its height above the terrain to a specific height. So here, as you can see, even though I have the hover lock enabled, I can still fire the thrusters manually and climb to higher altitudes. And once I let go of the manual thrusters, then the lander will actually drop back down to the previously designated hover lock height. So the simplest way of moving about on the planet is basically getting up to your desired height, locking the hover, and then tilting in the direction you want to travel while making sure you're looking in the right direction. Though unlike controlling a character walking around on the ground, you need to also make sure that once you get to your destination, you actually tilt in the opposite direction to start slowing down the craft. Otherwise there won't be a force to gradually slow you down and get to a standstill. So you might have noticed that the reticle at the center of the screen is always situated somewhere directly underneath the lander itself. So there's obviously a good reason for that. The lander itself has several tools at disposal. And depending on the functionality of the current tool that is selected, certain vantage points make more sense than others. Uh, in the current case, we actually have what is called the tether attachment uh, selected. So the user would care more about what's happening directly underneath the lander instead of potentially what's happening in front of it. So another one of our mechanics is fairly similar to how you can sprint in most first and third person shooters and that is our afterburner thrusters. So when you hold down the shift key and you thrust then the engine goes into overdrive and simply allows you to go faster in the given direction than you otherwise would have been able to. It's essentially a way of either allowing you to pick up heavier objects or travel to a certain direction faster, say you're trying to recover from a uh, sudden fall or you realize you're about to crash into an obstacle, that's where the afterburner would come in really handy. So here I wanted to just demonstrate what it essentially looks like when you start really pushing the capabilities of the lander and you start really dodging and weaving and flying through canyons. So while the game might actually take place high up above the sky from time to time, 
There will also be gameplay reasons to actually stay close to the ground and make sure that you can navigate these uh, features relatively fast. In this quick little segment, I wanted to demonstrate one of our relatively more advanced features, which is the ability to actually turn the lander upside down and thrust downwards. Now, one might think, well, why the hell would you need to do that? But truth be told, it's really so that you can travel even faster and essentially start slingshotting around the planet. And as we're circling around and eventually fly over to the dark side, it looks like a good place to toggle the searchlight so we can actually see where we're flying. So now that we've seen some of the basic flight mechanics, we'll look at what is potentially the most important tool for the lander will utilize, that is the tether. Now tethering, as you might expect, is the way the lander will carry different rocks and deliver them to their destination uh, for cashing them in, basically. And while utilizing the mechanic itself might seem simple, Given all the variables of how you would have to dig into the terrain to reach these rocks, and each rock could essentially have a different shape and different mass as well as different sizes, things start to get a little tricky. You'll notice immediately that our game is fairly physics based. What we mean by that is basically if a rock looks too big to carry or it won't fit under the lander well then there's a good chance that you probably won't be able to carry it. But that said, we've made sure that the lander feels and acts like a rugged piece of industrial machinery, so it can take quite a beating. And as you might imagine, further down the line, once you start upgrading the lander, then it'll become even more rugged and versatile. Also, note how the lander legs clasp onto the rocks to make sure that once the tether reels in the rock, it actually stabilizes underneath the lander. This is obviously to make sure that the lander does not get affected by the rock's motion while also making sure that the thrusters themselves don't affect the rock itself. I should point out for the purpose of this video though that Normally you won't really find many rocks just sitting on the top of the ground. Normally you'll have to actually dig down into the ground to expose the rocks, but digging and mining use a whole different set of tools that we'll be talking about in another devlog. So the tether hook itself can actually attach to just about anything you see around you. That does include the ground, cliffs, other units, structures, what have you. And here I am uh, launching the tether right onto the side of the cliff wall. I let go of the main thrusters and now all that's holding the lander sideways is the tether itself. And even when I try to thrust away from the surface, it won't let go until I actually let go of the tether hook. And from that point on, we're back in action and settling back down onto the ground. Here's another canyon run, this time using a different vantage point, which is the main viewpoint for some of the weapons that we have on the line itself. And while you're watching that, it's time for me to wrap up this dev vlog. Thanks for watching everyone.